In this tutorial, I will show you how to find the critical values in a Z hypothesis test. And I'm going to follow the um, steps outlined here at the bottom uh, left side of the screen. And according to this procedure, we must be given the distribution type, which we have Z. We must be given the type of the test, which we have, in this case, it's a right tail test. And we must be given the significance level alpha, which we are given, and it is equal to 10%. So we are ready to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the probability density curve of the test statistics distribution, which is Z in this case. And this is what a Z curve looks like. Next, we're going to draw the rejection region according to the type of the test, and we have a right tail test. So my rejection region will be on the right side, right here. So this is my rejection region. And we're going to label the areas and critical values, and we label the areas according to the type of the test. And the rule is that the um, area must be equal to the significance level alpha. So we label this area um, associated with this rejection region as 0 0.1. Therefore, this area is 0 0.9 as the remaining area. Next, we're going to label the critical values. So since this is a Z curve, we're going to label this value as Z sub um, 0 0.1. And um, next, we're going to compute it. Um, using the fact that the probability of x being greater than, um, or in this case it's z, but probability of x being greater than this unknown critical value is equal to 0 0.1. So one can use um, an alternative way to find uh, this critical value, but I'm just going to use StatCrunch because it is quite visual. And in StatCrunch, I'm going to open the Z calculator, which is a standard normal, meaning the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And I'm just going to replicate this image. So I'm going to erase this, erase this. I'm going to change the inequality symbol to greater than. And again, we're basically saying the area to the right of what number is equal to 0 0.1 and that number is your critical value. So in this case, our critical value is 1.282. And in the right tail test, the left critical value does not exist. So here's the right answer. In the next step, we are asked to sketch the rejection region. But again, given this image, it's really hard not to sketch it the right way. So the area um, in, over the rejection region in the right tail procedure is to the right. And we're just going to round 1.282 to the 1.3. And that's the final answer. So we found the critical values and we sketched the rejection uh, region. Let's try another one. Uh, before we do the two-tail test, I want to ask to actually practice the left-tail test. So th here's a problem. Um, and to do this one, I'm going to do literally the same exact uh, steps. So I'm going to use some um, Z curve, and I'm going to draw the rejection region according to the type of the procedure. So I'm going to draw it on the left side. So my rejection region is right here. And then I'm going to label the area. So the significance level is here 2%, meaning this area is 2%. Remember, the significance level is the area of the rejection region. So therefore, this is 0.98. So if we comfortable with alpha notation, we would label this as Z sub 0 0.98. And we can find this quantity using the fact that probability of Z being greater than uh, Z sub 0.98 is equal to 0.98. Or we can use the fact that the probability of Z being less than Z sub 0.98 is equal to 0 0.02. Either way, you will find the same value. So here on the right side, I'm going to do it both ways. So probability of Z being greater than uh, my critical value is 0.98. And there it is. Uh, if you want to actually the rejection region being highlighted in red, then you have to enter here 0 0.02. But now it's the area to the left. So we have to switch this inequality 
to be less than. And as you can tell, we got exactly the same answer. So the left critical value is negative that. And the right critical value in a, two uh, in a left tail test does not um, exist. Now, with this in front of us, it's really hard not to sketch the rejection region correctly. Uh, we're just going to do the rounding here, and there you go. So we answered this question. Um, now let's try two-tail test, and there you go. So in a two-tail test, we're going to do exactly the same steps. Uh, that is, we're going to first start with drawing the probability density curve for this distribution, which is Z. Then we're going to draw the rejection region, but in a two-tailed test, the rejection region goes to two sides, to both sides of the spectrum. So the rejection region is made of these two um, intervals. And, or but, the total area is equal to alpha, which is 6%. So if 6% is the total, each one of these regions has... 3% in it, and the area in between is 94%. Uh, so using the Z alpha notation or alpha notation in general, we can label this critical value as Z sub 0 0.03, and we can label this critical value as Z 0.97 because the combined area to the right of this value is 97%. Uh, However, using the symmetry, we can um, conclude that that critical value is just the opposite of the right critical value. And that's true for all symmetric distributions. So we can take advantage of that, or we may not to if we don't feel like it. It also depends on what kind of technology you have available. So we're going to find the z sub 0 0.03 using the fact that the probability of z being greater than z sub 0 0.03 is equal to 0 0.03. So we can do that here, type 0 0.03 here make it greater than, and this is your critical value. Now, to find the left critical value, we can do it in many ways. We can just conclude that it's the opposite of uh, the right critical value because of the symmetry. However, we don't have to. We can just use the fact that the probability of z being less than uh, z sub 0.97 is equal to 0 0.03. So, if we... All we have to do here is change this um, inequality, and we get exactly the answer that we expected. Um, now, an alternative way to find both of the critical values at the same time will be by selecting here in between and using the fact that the area in between the two critical values is equal to 0.94%. So this is a nice, easy shortcut that can be utilized in StatCrunch. It's not so easy to use this in uh, other technologies such as TI-83 or Excel. Uh, um, so there you go. StatCrunch does, it, does make it easier. However, pay attention that it's the middle region here is highlighted, not the rejection region uh, due to how this calculator is set up. Uh, so let's check if we got the right answer. Of course we did. And now to sketch the rejection region, uh, we're going to sketch it as two regions and we're just going to round it up so 1.9 on the right and negative 1.9 on the left and of course we got this um, correct so let me run a couple more examples um, and this time i'm not going to uh, draw it out i will just use that crunch and uh, think out loud this is a right tail test in the Z procedure, so I know the left critical value does not exist. And the right critical value is defined by uh, it's the area to the right being equal to alpha. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my alpha right over here. And because it's the right critical value, I'm going to make this greater than. So this is my right critical value. And uh, of course, we can draw it all out. So it's 1.4, and the area is to the right. Now let me do another one. This is a two-tailed test, so let's do one of the two-tailed tests. I'm going to use this little shortcut in StatCrunch. Um, well, first let me do it without a shortcut. So one way to find this critical value is to acknowledge that this is a two-tailed test. That means each tail will have 4.5%. 
So that means the right tail will have exactly this much. So this is my right critical value. Um, however, you can also use the fact that the area to the left of the left critical value will also be 0 0.045. So this is your left critical value. Or you can use the shortcut and just put your one minus alpha here. And you can find both critical values at the same time. And we got this right and drawing it out will give us this. So it's from 1.7 and up to negative 1.7 and up. And we got this. So let's do one more. Hopefully it's the left tail. So we'll get two of each. Or we can just generate a new version. And there you go. Let's just do another one left tail. Um, it's a left tail procedure, so the area to the left of the critical value is 0 0.04, and this is my critical value. And the right critical value in the left tail test does not exist. So this is how we find critical values in a Z hypothesis test. There you go. If you have any questions, let me know.